You have probably seen it. A low-pass filter digital audio workstation plugin. It could have had a roll-off and a resonance control knob or a slider. But it definitely had the cutoff frequency control. If you learned a little bit about digital signal processing, you may have come across formulas for different types of filters. However, these formulas typically require to have all their coefficients recalculated as soon as the cutoff frequency changes. That means that their real-time control is inefficient, computationally speaking. How to design and implement a low-pass or a high-pass filter where adjusting the cutoff frequency requires a recalculation of just one parameter? That is the topic of this video. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from dwolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. In this video, you will learn how to design and implement a low-pass or a high-pass filter where the cutoff frequency can be adjusted in real time. These filters will be based on an all-pass filter. At the end of this video, I will show you how to implement them in Python. If you want to start coding, you can of course jump right to that part, but then you'll miss the important basics needed to understand what you're coding. So let's start with a little recap. For the purpose of this video, we'll define a low-pass filter as a filter that attenuates frequencies above a certain frequency called the cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency is typically defined as the frequency at which the attenuation is already 3 dB. The frequencies below the cutoff frequency aren't affected by the filter. This figure shows the amplitude response of a low-pass filter, so how each frequency is attenuated at the output. Contrary to a low-pass filter, a high-pass filter attenuates all frequencies below the cutoff frequency. This figure shows its amplitude response. If you want to learn about other filter types, I have a video on this which I have linked to in the description below. So, how can we design all these filters? Traditionally, to design an IIR low-pass filter, we would design the analog prototype and digitize it with a bilinear transform. The resulting filters often require a recalculation of all their coefficients when we change their cutoff frequency. If you wanted to control the cutoff frequency in real time, for example, during a live performance or using an envelope, the computational overhead of this recalculation could be troublesome. Can we have a simple mapping? One filter control change requires one coefficient change. This is the promise of Alpas based parametric filters. To understand them, we first need to recap a few facts about the Alpas filter. An Alpas filter is a filter that does not attenuate or boost any frequencies, but introduces a frequency-dependent delay. That means that a single Alpas filter won't introduce any audible change in the signal. Only when we use this filter in some context can we hear its true power. If you want to learn more about the Alpas filter itself, you can check out my comprehensive video on Alpas filters, which I have also linked to in the description below. So, what is the frequency-dependent delay? That the Alpas filter introduces. Well, the higher frequency, the later it will appear at the filter's output. The amount of phase delay can be seen in the phase response of the Alpas filter. In this figure, you can see such responses for various values of the break frequency, so the frequency at which the phase shift of the Alpas is exactly minus pi over 2. This delay is too small to be audible. We can, however, observe its effect on the waveform in the time domain as seen in this figure. Here, three nicely aligned signs on the left pass through an Alpas filter and appear misaligned at the output on the right. At the output, the frequency content is the same, but the relative phase of the sign changed. At the same time, the output sounds exactly as the input. A very important fact is that we can control the break frequency of an Alpas filter of any order with a single coefficient. Here is the formula for the transfer function of the Alpas filter and the so-called Alpas coefficient. 
This formula is simply the bilinear transform of the analog Alpas. I have covered the bilinear transform in yet another video. But if you don't understand it now, don't worry. All you need to know is that the break frequency is easily controllable. And you know what also is easily controllable? The YouTube channel subscription. So please, if you haven't done that already, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to learn coding audio plugins with awesome audio effects. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Now, at the Nyquist frequency, so half of the sampling rate, the phase shift is exactly minus pi, so the tone corresponding to that frequency is exactly inverted in phase. If we add a signal and its phase inverted version, a phase cancellation will occur. We will obtain an all zero signal, so silence. For example here, a sum of two signs with the same frequency and the relative phase shift of pi results in phase cancellation. A phase cancellation means perfect attenuation, right? Could we possibly use this property in a low pass or a high pass filter? What will happen if we add the output of the first order Alpas filter to the original input signal, the so called direct path? Since the phase shift at the Nyquist frequency is minus pi, we'll obtain a phase cancellation at this frequency. At the direct current DC frequency, so at 0 Hz, the output signal is unaltered with respect to the input. If we add two signs that have the same frequency and are in phase, we effectively obtain a sign at the same frequency which has the amplitude equal to the sum of amplitudes of the original signs. In the case of the discussed structure, the DC component at the input and at the output are identical. Therefore, the amplitude of the input DC component will double. Hence, the multiplication by half so that we don't exceed the minus one one range and avoid clipping. Okay, we know that at the output of this structure, the zero hertz component will be doubled in amplitude and the Nyquist frequency component will vanish. What will happen between these two frequencies? Between these frequencies, the amplitude of signs will be gradually attenuated as the input signal and the output of the Alpas filter gradually move out of phase with increasing frequency, what can be seen in this figure. It shows the magnitude transfer function, so the amplitude response of the proposed structure. As you can see, we obtained a low pass filter. As I promised, the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter is very easy to control. We just need to set the A1 coefficient of the Alpas filter according to the already shown equation, which controls the frequency at which the phase shift of the Alpas is exactly minus pi over 2. The A1 coefficient can then be used as a regular filter coefficient. We thus obtained a 1 to 1 control to coefficient mapping. Okay. So we have our low pass filter. What about the high pass? Well, what if instead of adding the output of the L pass to the input signal, we subtracted it as in this figure? By multiplying the output of the L pass by minus one, we invert all the components in phase. Therefore, the frequency component at the Nyquist frequency, which was inverted in phase by the Alpas filter, gets inverted again and is back in phase with the corresponding component of the input signal. So the Nyquist frequency component before the multiplication by half is doubled in amplitude. Conversely, the DC component, which was previously in phase, is now negated. Therefore, the DC component is missing at the output signal of the structure. In between these two frequencies, we get an increase in the magnitude of the transfer function with increasing frequency. We thus obtained a high pass filter. Its cutoff frequency can again be controlled with just 
one coefficient, as in the low pass case, because we merely introduce the multiplication by minus one. Great, we have just designed easily controllable low pass and high pass filters. How can we implement them in code? I will now show you a sample implementation of the alpass based low pass and high pass filters in Python. First, let's start with a shebang and some useful imports. Now we'll define some constants that we need during processing. The first one is sampling rate, which will be 44.1 kHz. Then the duration of our test signal in seconds, we'll pick 5 seconds. And then we'll have a boolean variable telling us whether we want to have a low pass or a high pass. And finally, some amplitude so that we don't clip our loudspeakers. Now let's calculate how long our signal will be in terms of samples. We can now generate as many samples of white noise. We use white noise because uh, it has a uniform so-called power spectral density. So with this we want to have a signal that has a very broad spectrum because this signal will allow us to hear exactly the effect of the low pass filter or a high pass filter. Okay, now we'll define our cutoff frequency and in order to show that we can control the low pass filter in real time we'll alter this cutoff frequency with each sample and also it will nicely show us the effect of the low pass filter. So our cutoff frequency will go from 20 kHz to 20 Hz, so about the range of human hearing and that will allow us to hear this nice smooth uh, change of the cutoff frequency. But remember that human perception of frequency is non-linear, therefore we cannot use linear spacing, but we need to use geometrical spacing. Okay, now we'll allocate an array for the output of our processing. And here comes the Alpas filter implementation. So first, uh, we need to define an inner buffer of our Alpas filter, and I will denote this by dn1, and we'll initialize it to zero. If you're unsure about this implementation, be sure to check out the Alpas filter video. And now comes the actual sample by sample processing. So we'll write a for loop. We first need to get the break frequency of the Alpas filter, which in our case is, as we said, equal to the cutoff frequency of the filter. And now we can calculate the Alpas coefficient, the A1 coefficient. I will use a helper variable to do this. And now comes the Alpas filter difference equation. Again, if you're unsure, please check out the Alpas filter video or the article. Finally, we need to store a special variable in the Alpas filter buffer for the next iteration. Okay, that's it. That's our Alpas filter processing. We now need to add the output of the Alpas filter to the direct path for the low pass or subtract it for the high pass. So we can write. And now we can add the Alpas output to the direct path and we'll get a high pass filter if we set the high pass variable to true. Now we'll scale the amplitude of our output signal by half so that we don't clip. And finally we scale our signal by the desired amplitude. The last thing we need to do is we need to play our signal. I use the sound device library for this and remember we need to wait for the playback to finish. Now let's run our Python file. OK, 
Can you notice how the cutoff frequency lowers over time? We achieve this easily thanks to the one-to-one -one control to coefficient mapping. And now you can go and implement these filters yourself. In summary, in this video we discussed an easy and popular method of obtaining a low pass or a high pass filter by combining an all pass filter and a direct path. The all pass filter delays the input frequency components. The phase delay increases with frequency. At DC the phase shift is zero. At the break frequency the phase shift is minus pi over two. At the Nyquist frequency the phase shift is minus pi. Adding the all pass output to the direct path creates phase cancellation at the Nyquist frequency. With this we obtain a low pass filter. And conversely, subtracting the all pass output from the direct path creates phase cancellation at the DC component. We thus obtain a high pass filter. If you found this video useful, please consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Jan Wilczek. Thank you. The real power of the all-pass based low-pass and high-pass filter can only be seen in a real-time implementation. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll implement these filters as a DAW plugin. If you don't want to miss out on this, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.